Well, Callum, we said it's a therapy episode, but this feels more like we need to admit to a psych ward the way this is going. Oh boy, it's bad, isn't it? Nothing good about it, no positive at all. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I mean, we're almost be as clutching as the many straws as Derek McInnes was in his post-match interview for that trying to find positivity. That was horrendous, just blaming it on like everything. And then you compare his interview with Ferguson's, it's just night and day. And you wouldn't think Ferguson's the young football player compared to the experienced pro manager for over 10 years now. Yeah. Um, changed our whole strike force in 24 hours and still managed to produce zero goals last night as well. So that was mm. quite impressive. Beginning to think they weren't the problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit of worrying, a bit of worrying. Uh, well, it doesn't help. You can change strikers as much as you like. If you're not creating anything for them, then it doesn't make much odds, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, we did pose the question how to solve a problem like Sam Cosgrove in a previous episode. I didn't really expect the answer to be sell them and change your whole strike force in one day. Just banish them all. Yeah, but here we are. Here we are, and I suppose before we get into the debacle that is the Livingston game, we should just reflect on the transfer window, so let's get into that before we have too much of a meltdown too early on. Yeah, I, w- I was feeling nice and positive about it, but uh, it's been ruined, but let's get into it. <laughs> I was feeling okay until I listened to McInnes' interview, and that riled yeah. me. So, um, Sam Cosgrove, like we said, sold to Birmingham for £2 million. Good deal for the club? Yeah, brought him in for, what, 20000 Thirty thousand. He's not been firing, so his probably his value's already gone down from the two point six that we accepted from Gingong to two million. So sell now. Yeah, there's no no uh, issues with that from me. Good business in all honesty. But the one positive maybe about Aberdeen Football Club at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose a player that's maybe not wanting to be here, maybe had his head turned. Mm. Um, it's a good business turning that small fee into two million. I know Carlisle, I think they've got a 20% clause, so they'll mm. get a nice hefty sum. But good business in the current climate for the club. It's money that is much needed, I suppose, as Cormac says, we're, you know, speaking about the finances. Yep, pleading else, skin toe. So it, it, it helps the coffers a little bit. Yeah, and I suppose even more helpful to the coppers is the council saying that they'll help with the funding of the new stadium. So we'll take every little bit of help that we can get. Very welcome news that. Yeah, that's one of the concerns that we had about it. So that is a positive again. That's I've had two positives so far, but my neck. Don't, Don't count on many more to come, folks. Mm, I know. That's two off the park positives. Once we get into the on the park stuff, <laughs> that. <laughs> um, Curtis Main mysteriously dropped out of the squad with an injury. Mm-hmm. Um, had his contract cancelled and signed for Shrewsbury. Very strange given how often Curtis Main was chosen to lead the line over Sam mm. Cosgrove, that he's just suddenly out of favour and yeah, yep. contract cancelled. Weird that he seemed to be the sort of, yeah, he sort of was the go-to man for McInnes and then that happened. But I suppose when you've got the option to get someone else in, when even Curtis wasn't really firing that much, saving Curtis as if he's a world beater, but that I'm just saying that because that was who, uh, who was getting the starts. Um, mm-hmm. Good move all round. Shrewsbury probably weren't going to pay money for him, so take it for free, fine by me. Goodbye. There's another signing, though, of McInnes is not to see out his contract. Yeah, it's concerning. I, I, I would lost kind of how many that is now. Yeah, I think Cameron Christie put on his Twitter account, and I, we're almost approaching, if not already, at double figures of signings um, that haven't done so. Obviously, Ojo's now out on loan, so if mm-hmm. he'd be another one to, to be the same if he was to depart in the summer. Um, yeah, we can plead uh, hard done by about the budget situation and everything, but when you're, that's what you're spending the budget on, then you've got no complaints. You can't yeah, complain. look at the likes of previous seasons, Chris Forrester and Stephen Gleeson, the money that we spent on them and how they how they ended up working out. Um, the other striker that we did have at the start of the month that's now no longer with us is Bruce Anderson. Mm-hmm. Um, been given a second loan spell. Uh, this time at the Premiership, obviously the one at Air didn't work out. How do you think he'll get on at Hamilton? Very interesting, the fact it didn't work out at Air and now he's somehow got gone up a level uh, to Hamilton. But again, we say it every time he goes out on loan. If he gets a run of games, then maybe there's a chance he might start firing. It's probably do or die time now for Bruce. If he can go and do it at Hamilton and um, bag a few goals, then maybe he's got a future at Aberdeen. Possibly he might get one more chance, but... That's all. It's got. It's got to be done now, Bruce. 
Yeah, I think Brian Rice, as I, as I said on the Only Arcus podcast, um, given my opinion on his on his signing, I said I think Brian Rice will be the ideal coach for him mm-hmm. to work under. Um, and just hopefully he's given a chance in the right formation mm-hmm. um, at Arcus, but I totally agree, his last chance saloon for him. And if he is going to get another chance at Aberdeen, I can't see it being more than a one-year deal. No, if yeah. That, because right now, we don't actually have any strikers on our books. I, I think it's outside Michael Ruth, who was recalled from our growth. Wow. So going into next season, we hope we'll have Michael Ruth. That's about it. But um, yeah, that was another interesting one. Um, Michael Ruth, I suppose the only, if you're truly you're only going to recall him from our growth, he's getting decent enough chances uh, if he's going to feature. But then he wasn't on the bench, was he? I don't think last night. I don't. Yeah, no, I don't think he's featured recently um, for our growth. I d- okay. think he might have played against Dundee. Yeah. But I'm not sure if he's starting regularly. So yeah, maybe. We're just calling him back in for cover. You know, yeah. thing is though, if if uh, if he was, he's obviously a youngster, but going under playing under Dick Campbell, that's enough to turn any boy into a man for a few months. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, he might get his chance. Yeah, and an unusually busy deadline day was um, concluded with three loan signings: Fraser Hornby from Ream, um, three appearances so far this season, zero goals. Callum Hendry from St. Johnson, I think it's 17 appearances, zero goals. And Flo Camberry, who just joined St. Gallen in the summer, um, played eight games so far this season in the six-month spell, obviously uh, tested positive for COVID in November. And yeah. how many goals, Callum? Zero. That's, yeah, two zeros. Zero. <laughs> Sorry. Zero, the amount of goals we like scoring just now. Yeah, it's it's good, isn't it? Um, to be fair, strike force wasn't performing. Bring in three, so... It's positive that you've got and it's three sort of different players as well. So that's quite good that it's not sort of main and cause where we just do the exact same thing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think we should credit McInnes in the fact that he saw an area of the pitch that wasn't working mm-hmm. and took a chance on changing it all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there is a player there in Fraser Hornby. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I know we're going to come on to it last night. It didn't work out for him, but I think that's more given the fact that he was so isolated rather than mm. the player player himself. Callum Hendry knows knows the league. Looked lively last night, I thought. A nice heavy challenge, which I didn't actually think was even a free kick. It shouldn't have been a free kick. Um, and then Flo Camberry, obviously. Um, passionate comments when he signed for Rangers. We all know about them. But mm. again, another player that knows the league and hopefully maybe coming with a point to prove to his parent club. Yep, definitely. When you look statistically uh, at their form this season, then it's, it's a bit concerning. Um, but, you know, they're, they're triggers in, in previous times at other clubs or whatever. They um, they know where the goal is. And I just get excited whenever there's new signings, no matter who it is. I just, just love the chaos. Yeah. And it's fair to say there was excitement throughout the deadline day as an Aberdeen fan. But, boy, was that quickly wiped out on Tuesday night. Oh boy, they were quick to uh, bring us back down to earth, weren't they? They're very enjoyable. Yeah, it took less than 10 minutes to do that. And, you know, it's funny, I was listening to the Talk Livy podcast um, to see what they were saying in terms of the preview. And Ewan, who had gotten on the last show, said he described us as being deflated mm-hmm. after the nil-nil draw. So I was quick to message him last night and I said, if you think that was deflating, wait till you hear oh this episode. Oh boy, yeah, I think he's right though. And there seems to just be no real bravery on the ball at all. And that's when I noticed the difference was Scott Pittman skipping past players, firing a shot off, hitting the post, unlucky there. And then us, there's just no real bravery in the play, no confidence about any of it. Um, it was terrible. And not helped by our man in this between the sticks. Hmm. Going into the game, we were 14 unbeaten against Livingston, but it's Livingston that improved their unbeaten record to 14. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually their first win at Pataudry in 17 years. So a good day at the office. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. My first game, actually, my first football game was against Livingston and it was a draw. So I would have taken that last night, in all honesty, now looking back on it. But uh, yeah, very typical of us to just go and apps, just hand them. At the e- not even, they didn't have to do that much. Okay, no, not taking any credit away from them or anything but respect to Livingston but we handed them it straight away immediately Absolutely. straight out of the traps it's same again same as the game against Motherwell mm-hmm. you know and we normally do our one word summary but as Jonathan Main said last night on Twitter how many times can you find 
a different word to describe that performance last night. And I think we've got so much to dissect. Yeah. Um, and we're spoiled for choice on which word to use, so we will probably just give that a, a rest for this this week. But thank you to all of you that did reply mm-hmm. on Twitter at RTG underscore podcast. It, it's kind of enjoyable seeing the, the feeling amongst the support yeah. initially at full time. Exactly, yeah, definitely. Basically, any word that you can imagine as a negative connotation, we probably got it. So there we are. Have you learned the meaning of abdicate yet? Don't have a clue. Don't have a clue. Educate me, come on. It's pretty much like resigning. All right, okay. It's just a that... posh way to say resign. Pretty much. Didn't have a clue. Didn't have a Scooby Doo. Not a chance. But yeah, thanks. Well, every day is a school day. Exactly. Um, so a change team for both. Um, Livingston were resting players off the bat anyway, and Scott Robinson. But mm-hmm. losing John Guthrie and Craig Sybil before the game even started to injury on the grass, as the uh, Livy boys like to point out. Um, we also then started new signing Fraser Hornby over Matty Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Looking at the two lineups, I was confident. So was I, and especially the, especially the fact, yeah, that was obliterated immediately. Um, <laughs> I, I was as well, to be honest. I was very excited. I was very Hornby. I was buzzing. I was loving life. And But then as soon as they got on the pitch, it looked like we were the team that had to change uh, in the last minute. I had two players dropped out. Mm-hmm. They were flying. We came out, stumbled out of the blocks. Um, but I, yeah, I was. I had reason to believe we might actually do something. And oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's, it's funny, that's what I've got in the notes there. How fired up Livy were. Almost like they came with something to prove. Because mm-hmm. I think they'll be disappointed in their performance probably on Saturday. I thought, you know, we dominated large spells without really being threatening. Um but it just seemed to be one-way traffic in the mm-hmm. first half. Yeah, they came with a belief that they have, they could do it and also a feeling the sense that they belong up competing with us and mm-hmm. we just looked the total opposite. Like, we mentioned every day is a school day. It looks like a team of schoolboys out there. Nice. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, right, goals that we lost. First goal, Greg Lee... <laughs> Um, yeah, you said on Twitter, which did amuse me, the worst left back performance of Tadri since you in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, sheer panic when he was closed down and gave the ball away. Yep. Um, for anyone who hasn't, didn't maybe see the second tweet, just uh, for context, we lost 3 0 in the cup final. I was taken off at half time. I was about half a foot shorter than everyone else, at least half a yard slower than everyone else. And I was right footed. I got taken off for a striker, and Greg Lees was. Just about as bad as that, if not worse. So there we go. Yeah, um, he liked giving the ball away, even when he was clipping it down the line. That was just seemed like hopeless balls down the line. But that, I wish he'd done that. I wish he'd done that for that first goal. Just the sloppiest pass. Well, that's the thing, though. In that position, just if in doubt, put it out is mm-hmm. the one thing I always remember from my football days. Mm-hmm. Or just get it as far away from the danger zone as possible. It was almost like a no-look pass into midfield. Mm -hmm. But there didn't seem to be any danger when the ball went out wide to Julian Serrano. No, (laughs) Joe Lewis liked to just make sure there was. That man, this season, okay, previous seasons, I would have said possibly the best keeper in the league. This season, don't know who that is in goals and what they've done with Joe Lewis, I have no idea. Hmm. Not the first Scared time. The post. <laughs> exactly. Not the first time that's happened that he's thrown one into his own net. Won't be the last. I'm probably willing to bet. And yet they said maybe he was uh, put off by the post or something like that. The fact they've even had to come out with such a ludicrous sentence tells you how bad it was. I don't even know how he did that. Yeah, and McInnes said, you know, to the players, you know, we've got to watch for the wind and play to the conditions. Was Joe Lewis just not paying attention during that because it just all sorts of bad and as and I think you know McInnes's point about it then made the players look nervy after that mm-hmm. was totally true and especially when you then look at the second goal but I just wanted to ask on Joe Lewis I saw a few comments last night I just want to see your opinion on this do you think Joe Lewis is currently playing as a keeper that's got no real competition for his place it does strike me sort of as Shea Logan-esque performances and the fact that he didn't have competition for so long and then sort of just 
took it for granted he was going to be in the starting eleven and didn't have to put in any sort of performance. Mm-hmm. I think that is the case. And I said, I said that earlier. Uh, the fact Gary Woods is on the bench, you can't really see him coming in, can you? Mm-hmm. Um, I think we maybe could have with Thomas Cherney, but yeah, just I don't know. He looks sort of complacent, lacking confidence, just horrific all down, mm-hmm. all round in all honesty. I don't have any any. <laughs> There's no justification for what just happened, in all honesty. No, it's similar to the St Mirren one. Absolutely, you can't defend it. <laughs> Literally, can't exactly. defend it. Is that um, perfect? What about his captaincy? Um, do you do you agree with a goalkeeper as a captain? No. Um, and I think, given Ferguson's interview as well, that is the man who should be captain too. But at the same time, I don't agree in the fact that that's why he's playing horribly just because he's wearing an armband shouldn't make any mm-hmm. difference on your ability to use your funnily enough arms it's just yeah I, I don't think he should be captain I think there should always be an outfielder as captain because they have the ability to make the influence more mm-hmm. and Ferguson just looks more naturally like a leader he's okay mm-hmm. he's young but I don't think that is the reason for his bad form so okay he's maybe not been the same since then but I don't I think that's possibly just coincidence I don't think it makes yeah. any difference no absolutely I'm not saying that he's throwing the ball into the net just purely because he's a captain. Um, I mean, for me personally as well, I agree. I don't really see a goalkeeper being an ideal captain. I, Joe Luce is such a nice guy. Yeah. I think you need someone with a bit of anger in them. And, and you see that in a, in a Lewis Ferguson mm-hmm. type person as we've, we've seen and for anyone that hasn't seen his post-match interview I strongly urge you to mm-hmm. watch it just because there is actually some passion at the club. Mm. I, you know, made me feel that someone actually cares at this club about yeah. what's currently going wrong. Mm-hmm. The only thing, if Lewis Ferguson was made captain, he might want to work on his discipline. Um, flailing arm again last night. Yeah, he probably got away with that one there. But I think he, even regardless with that, he's the only person, maybe Dean Campbell, that can come out with an ounce of credibility after last night's performance, in the second half especially. But, I mean... <clears throat> yeah, it's it's um, it there's no it doesn't seem it doesn't inspire you. There doesn't seem to be any sort of I like link between the the fans and the club right now at all. No. And usually, a captain is someone who like even if we were there, when say for example when Graham Shinney went flying into a tackle, something like that, or you see mm-hmm. Russell Anderson putting his body on the line, and then that gets the crowd going and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the benefit of having an outfielder's captain. I'm just fed up, Glenn, in all honesty. And I had Rowies for lunch earlier. That cheered me up a little bit. I was thinking about the Murray Cup, but I'm back down to just misery, speaking about yeah. it. Um, second goal, just, I don't know, just a defensive, I, I, I wouldn't say shit show, but who knows if you have to bleep that out or not. I hope not. Just, no, I'm not going to That's bother. what it was. not going to bother. That's what it was. <laughs> Nicky Devlin's freezer bird in there. Easy. I'm not sure. Uh, I thought Hoban just loses his man because... And I don't know, I don't know who Taylor's picking up, but I don't know if he's looking in front. But <laughs> hopeful appeals for offside, hopeless yeah, more like. Exactly, the defending was definitely hopeless. Um, it's just you could probably tell at home from the way we're speaking about it, our general feelings about it all right now. It just I'm, I'm not getting an impassioned run. It's just I feel so uh, just done with it all. And yeah, there's almost that's it's a really good point because. I, said, I was texting Brune last night who went for a walk to clear his head after the game and I said to him, I almost can't even be bothered doing this episode. There just seems mm. to be just such a I don't know the right word, like an acceptance that these results are just coming now. Like we don't seem to look like winning a game. It's almost just like we're just on our way to the end of the season and the sooner the end of the season comes the better for this club because yeah. it's and it's almost as well, I know we're going to come to it, but it's almost like there's an acceptance that change is required. An acceptance that change is required, but also fully aware that it's not going to come. It's not going to come. There's no point. And it's not going to come. And I also think it's not going to come till at least the end of the season. Exactly. And by that stage, we could easily be just mid-table fodder yeah. like the rest. Of as I did like Neil Ross's tweet last night. Um when and Andy Constantine obviously said, like, you know, I think it's taken out of context the headline a little bit about, you know, the, the thought of hearing Champions League music 
Mm -hmm. um, at Pataudry and Neil Rossing. Can't wait to hear the sound of the Betfred group stages music at Pataudry. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way we're going. I'm looking forward to that. I might get like Cove away. That'd be nice. It'd be good if they do it regionally. That'd be brilliant. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely agree in that. It's just, and also another thing. Twitter used to be funny for a while when, uh, whenever we lost, it was, you know, that'll maybe lift the spirits now. I feel like everyone's the same now. It's just genuinely just so fed up. There's not even anything funny going on. It's sad. It's an angry place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one, one thing on the um, losing Ash Taylor to injury, mm-hmm. uh, we saw Dean Campbell come on, who I agree with you, did, did a fine enough job yeah. given nobody else really did a fine enough job. Yeah. Um, so it's not like he stuck out and it's not like he was the worst player on the park. But mm. do you think maybe we could have brought on somebody else so that we didn't have to drop Ross McCrory back into defence? Are you suggesting changing the shape when it's not working? That would be so <laughs> stupid. Uh, yes, I would have liked to have seen that happen. Again, that's no slander on Dean Cowboy. came on, did fine especially considering what the rest of the useless tossers were doing. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would have liked to see us change the shape. I would like to see us change the shape going into the Hibs game. Again, still no confidence that'll happen. We'll probably put McCrory into the back and waste him there. And he'll probably do fine, but not in his best position, which I can't wait for. Yeah, obviously we then lost Hedges um, to an injury. almost mm-hmm. rugby tackle to the ground so mm-hmm. that was four injuries on a grass pitch uh, a running joke that we've got with the the Livy boys um we're not we're not saying that plastic pitches are the way forward some people didn't take the joke that we retweeted off the Livy podcast too lightly saying that you know will this be investigated the injuries that we're getting but it was it was interesting to see Connor McLennan come off at the same time yeah i think that was Possibly, obviously, I don't think he was, he was injured. I think it was possibly trying to change things by putting on Callum Hendry and then the fact that we would only have one more stoppage later on to do so because mm-hmm. um, we'd have used two. Uh, that's probably why. But I, I mean, is Conor McLennan the man that we probably should have taken off? I don't know. I mean, he's quiet, I suppose, but by no means the worst person out there. But then again, we're probably not going to take off Joel Lewis, so are we? Yeah, I mean, it was a strange sub given the timing of it, really. Yeah. Um, it just, but sorry, you also he also is just in a presser. McKiss is just going, oh, if Connor gets a run of games, blah blah blah, and then you take him off in the first half. <laughs> but I mean, desperately trying to change something and get us back into the game, but something we didn't really kind of look like doing at all in the first half, and you know, it definitely came at the right time because we were devoid of any ideas, any form of energy. Mm-hmm. And like I said, any time Livingston got in and around our box, they just looked like scoring. Mm-hmm. Yep. Big J. Emmanuel Thomas causing issues as well. Uh, it was just, that's what I'm saying. When we go forward, I still I just have no confidence that it's going to result in anything positive, mm-hmm. in all honesty. Maybe a corner at best, which we'll then <laughs> deliver and they'll head it away while keeper will collect it and nothing will happen. So Yeah, and I mean, you know, we did... I think McInnes did come out and also say, you know, we need time for the new signings to gel. Mm-hmm. But I f- there's only I one in feel- that starting eleven. That's the thing. It's not a new, whole new team. Yeah, there was only one, and he couldn't have looked more isolated. I don't mm-hmm. know if he was still trying to be in COVID isolation the way we were playing mm-hmm. in that first half. But I, you know, I asked folk to send us the analysis of how many touches he got throughout his appearance yesterday. Thirty-three touches. Barely any in the opposition box. Just, and you know, you you said there when we were speaking about the transfer windows, it's maybe not the personnel that's the problem. No, um, concern. Uh, of course, I'm surprised he had 33. In all honesty, that's yeah, so um, high. Uh, yeah, that's probably that's higher than I expected. But yeah, he looks so isolated. No one really up in support. Ferguson did his best in the second half, um, to tr- sort of break from midfield. That was about it. again, probably maybe. As uh, as mentioned, probably fortunate maybe to still be on the park, but yeah, it's it's pretty worrying. And yeah, I don't think the tactics are gonna. You can get all the new strikers in as you like. The tactics are still horrible. Doesn't make a difference. Mm. Yeah, and you know, for those of you that haven't watched or listened to Lewis Ferguson's post match comment, he basically said the the whole team was miles off it. Mm-hmm. Um, every single player 
was miles off it. And we shouldn't be losing to anybody at home. What a terrific attitude to have um, in that we shouldn't be losing to anyone at home, at home, sorry. But also how damning of a player to come out and not be afraid to have a go and say, this was unacceptable. We were miles off it. Whereas the manager's looking for excuse after excuse. Yep. That's what I want to see from McInnes. I want to see that anger and passion. It just yep. looks totally gone from him. Um, yeah, it's just a complete difference uh, night and day. Um, it's just it's just so concerning. The fact, well, it's good the fact Lewis Ferguson's come out and said it, but it's fine. It's him that's having to come out and say it. A youngster, not an experienced professional, not the manager who should, if also if if he's instilling tactics and then the players aren't carrying them out on the pitch then surely he has a right to be angry. But he's not angry, so that's probably quite concerning. And that links into Cosgrove's training comment. And no one's shocked to hear about that either, are they? And uh, Tommy Massey brought it up, and he was saying to mention it in this. I, he's probably right, because there just doesn't seem to be any patterns of play at all. No, Callum, I totally agree. That's, that's a really good point. And it's certainly when Kennedy came on, I saw someone say, why didn't we match him up with... Julian Serrano, a player that he gave a torrid time to. And we didn't really see any, I'm not sure what the right word is to use here. Um, Cause we did see a better intent, I suppose, mm. in the second half. Yeah. But there wasn't really anything, I suppose, you know, when you're speaking about patterns of play, mm-hmm. anything really to kind of indicate we were going to get a goal back. Yeah, there was intent in terms of probably the head down run and actually dribble at them, which was a start. But there wasn't sort of any, there didn't seem to be any fluidity to the play at all. It seemed it seemed to be exactly that. Kennedy, you get the ball down, have a run at them, maybe get by them and stick it across. Mm-hmm. It's not inspiring. I mean, no, it's not. But Red TV would definitely have oh, you yeah. think that it was the best performance we've put in in a long time, the way they constantly told us how mm. much better we were in the second half. I mean... It wasn't hard to be better because the first half was just that bad. Yeah, it couldn't be any worse, in all honesty, could it? Unless Joe Lewis fancied throwing another one into his own goal. Yeah, and I mean, the the second half really didn't have much about it. Mm. Um, yes, we were, I yeah, I say the word loosely, but better. Mm-hmm. Uh, if only we had that level of desire in the first half. Um, but the Ferguson goal or not goal. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, did you think it crossed the line? Uh, no, in all honesty, I don't think it did. Cause just the way it came back out rather than, well, didn't even go in. But if, if it had gone in, it might have been bounced behind the bar and it would have been obvious. Mm. I don't think it really, I don't think it did. The, the net sort of did bulge a little bit, but that could have been anything. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I kissed the side netting. But whether or not the whole ball was over, I don't know what McInnes is doing, yeah. indicating that the fourth official, it's like this far over. Yeah. It, and even I, what angle he has seen to come out and say that is a ludicrous decision by the officials yeah. not to award the goal. I mean, d- despite how many replays Red TV wanted to show of it last night, it was never clear. No. The and the linesman's out of position anyway yeah. to, to see it. And to blame so to blame it on that and be like, oh, that could be a different game, blah, blah, blah. That's okay, even still, that's still one occurrence that it happened. But it's not like mm-hmm. there was a flurry of goal line like stramashes in there where it's like, oh, that could have been a goal, that could have been a goal. We could mm-hmm. have uh, if this had gone differently or this had gone differently. It was just one isolated incident. And you can't pin yeah. it on an official, okay, wasn't in position, whatever. You can't pin it on him for your team being absolutely cack. I, I could have understood if it was as he wanted it to be miles over the line mm-hmm. because the momentum absolutely would have changed had we got a goal back. But to to pin your hopes on that mm-hmm. is just badly papering over the cracks that, that were there from, from last night. And we huffed and puffed for the rest of the game. And I don't really remember, I'm going to try and pronounce his name, Strichek making any decent save throughout the game? No, I think maybe there's a couple attempts from Ferguson, but then even still, look at our one. Okay, if Ferguson's uh, is over the line, but they still hit the post, so they've hit the woodwork as well. So it's sort yeah. of, it's just yeah, it's it's very concerning. 
it's not it's not even like we're getting like we're just not being able to capitalize on chances and being not just not being clinical it's the fact we're not even getting to that stage of having loads of chances and missing them they're not even getting to that there's no periods of play where we're absolutely dominating or anything like that it's just so dull and boring and tuning in on Saturday is just an absolute thought now yeah and that's the thing as well despite our level of intensity in the second half that obviously got no reward Livingston hardly had to get out a third year in the second half. They just managed the game as as you do when you're 2-0 up away from home. And when we did, like you said, put a little bit of pressure on, they ran up the other the end of the pitch and Scott Pittman's desperately unlucky not to put them 3-0 up. So if they wanted to step it up, they just showed quite easily how, how easily they could. And that's not even a full strength for Livingston either. So and, and to be fair, that's what makes it so much worse. Mm -hmm. is that they weren't at full strength. They rested some key players on their unbeaten run so far and still dismantled us with absolute ease. And we're going to, we've come out of that double header. I said there'd be a meltdown if there wasn't four. There's not four. There has been a meltdown. But also, that's one point from a double header against Livingston, right? We've got a double, a double header come up against Celtic. And yeah, well, I actually, guarantee Nick, sorry. It's, Kyle. We do have Kilmarnock now wedged in. All right, okay. So. Well, even still, in those, I still think we'll come out with the same amount of points. Zero, but maybe not because Kilmarnock are pretty bad. But you can say, you can guarantee the excuse will be mentioned at least once. Oh, we can't, we can't compete with uh, the budget of Celtic. Budget of us in Livingston, budget between us and St. Johnston, whoever, guarantee big gap quality mm. on the pitch. Big gap, but in their favour. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Wicks and Cormac are quite quiet. They were very quick mm -hmm. to come out after the victory um, against Motherwell, but they've been very quiet ever since. Just wonder what the feeling in the boardroom is um, just now, given what we're seeing on the pitch. I, I'm also kind of thinking as well, given the backing they've given McInnes mm -hmm. on just in terms of the transfers, going out and getting three new players. Yeah. No chances he going anywhere. Yeah, they've gone and given him, shown some confidence in him to turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> well, it took less than 24 hours to, to show signs of otherwise. Um, like you say there, we spoke about this run of games in February that was going to be a tricky run of, run of fixtures mm -hmm. and how many points was going to be acceptable. You said anything less than four versus Livingston will cause a meltdown, as you've just touched on there. We got one. You also said we should set our sights on twelve, but mm -hmm. the aim should be no. The aim should be eight. Do you still think now, given our fixtures are Hibs away, St Mirren at home, Celtic, Kilmarnock at home, and then Celtic again? Do you still think we could get eight there? No, <laughs> in all honesty, but that's going to be out of fifteen points coming up in the league. Grant Heath messaged us saying that he expects us to get seven. Yeah. Are you as optimistic as Grant in getting seven there? My initial thoughts was maybe six. If we're lucky, we might get six. Um, I suppose seven. There probably will be a nil-nil in there somewhere, so probably seven is probably quite realistic. Um, oh, I, I mean, I mean, St Mirren, they've been on okay form too. Uh, and we can't guarantee that they'll get their goalkeeper sent off uh, this mm. time, so... I well, he'll did against be Hibs, back. So, exactly. I think he'll be back now for the back against, game. Exactly. Hibs only narrowly beat them, and that was them with 10 men after the keeper got sent off. And mm -hmm. they put five past Dundee United after we've successfully put none past them. So. And one at Parkhead. There we go. Exactly. So, yeah. absolute toilet. Yeah, and, you know, I'd said in that episode that I was expecting nine, albeit at a push, and anything less than eight. We both jointly agreed anything less than eight would be should spell trouble for the manager. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly enough, I was listening to the Totally Scottish Football show this morning and um, JJ Bull was touting Jim Goodwin as possibly a candidate who'd be suitable for the Aberdeen job mm -hmm. if um, McInnes sees himself elsewhere. I said that after um, we played them, uh, when we played them twice in succession, Jim Goodwin and then uh, McCountness instead. Good, good funny <laughs> ha-has from me. Um, but no, I think that is that is, would be a realistic um, manager that we could go out and mm -hmm. get, in all honesty. Maybe not the most inspiring, but probably couldn't do much worse of a job, in all honesty. 
and he would have a good time between now and the end of the season to see what fodder we're going to get rid of with a lot of players out of contract and such. So, mm-hmm. but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, is it? And, and do you think, though, if we do struggle to get more than eight points throughout the month of February, that there will be some serious questions from the board around the manager? Or, or do you feel there is that inevitability that it's just not going to happen until the summer and it's just going to be one massive clear out of players in the summer, but potentially mm. a manager too? I think there's no chance he goes before the end of the season unless he walks, in all honesty. Um, he won't. Exactly, which he won't do. So I think in this, if he does go, it'll be in the summer, which I suppose, given the amount of players out of contract, again, is still a decent amount, a decent time. So there'll be a lot of place in the squad, a lot of wages freed up for the new manager coming in. Obviously, he won't have time to judge what, 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 uh, what positions need improved on and things. But yeah, I think it'll be the summer if it does happen. And that even then, that's probably a stretch. Because if, if, we, if we finish fourth now and qualify for some European Conference League, come up, well, it was a hard season, money, blah, blah, blah. And then he'll get another, he'll get the last year of his contract to see how he does. Mm. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, Gary Bjorklund said on our YouTube um, channel saying, you know, fans are right to be kind of pissed off at the level of performances that we're seeing just now. And fans, mm. you you touched on it there, they're growing fed up Saturday, looking ahead to Saturday, it's becoming a thought. The season's just, it's just flatline now. There's just no enthusiasm from fans towards the team. Mm. The team can't even perform to a level to inspire the fans to get enthused, enthused watching them. It's just... No, nope. it seems like a matter of time before something gives. There's no enjoyment whatsoever in it anymore, is there? Because even if we no. were going and it was still like this, then at least we'd be able to go. We should be in Middleton's on Saturday, loving life pre-match. Um, but it's it's and we'd get to sing the I'm Hornby songs. So that would be nice. <laughs> but there is just no enjoyment in it these days. And um, I could take some enjoyment if we were winning games, even if it was terrible football. We're not even mm-hmm. getting that now. It's, it's, it's just uh, I said earlier it's just a thought and I can't be bothered with it if, if, if we weren't going to come on here and speak about it probably we'd just turn it off at half time most of the time yeah like I said to you last night I ended up playing pool for the second half and just put the laptop in the corner and I, I saw like the, obviously the Ferguson chance and a few other chances when it wasn't my my turn but mm-hmm. just the players aren't willing to put in the effort you, you can't blame the fans for not responding in the same in the same way either especially you look ahead to Saturday you've got fork out again to to watch these mm-hmm. games when we're not performing and it's, it's it is so easy to just switch off and watch some of the hundreds of things you've got recorded or something like that um, yeah, or it's so easy. Yeah, or go outside and get your daily exercise exactly. instead. Exactly. Um, I just can't be bothered on anymore. I really can't be bothered. And if I was going, yeah, if I was going, it would be fine. But no, yeah, not exactly. Right and yeah. that's the thing: we don't even have the day out to look forward to, which mm-hmm. most of the time is a hundred times better than the game itself. So mm. it just compiles everything. Yep, can't wait. Very positive. I hope this is what exactly what all you people were tuned in for. I hope we've uh, met your uh, expect and <laughs> expectations. Yeah, and I suppose you know we should now look forward. Um, in terms of podcasting, not. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To the weekend's game, and we'll we're joined once again by Michael Monin um, to review the weekend's clash against Hibernian. Michael, welcome back to the show. Nice of you to join us again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Callum, hopefully Saturday is going to be, well, it can't be much worse than, than last night. We're all living in hope. Well, Michael's not living in hope, but we're living in very much hope, and that's all it is, hope. There's no nothing to base it off that it's going to be any better, is there? There's there's really not. Um, and I think, well, Michael's probably got some, some stuff to be paused about. Hibs are winning games and scoring goals. So, mm-hmm. um, Michael, do you think, you know, I've already got the better of you twice already this season. Do you think we can do it a third time or are you confident in Hibs' ability? Well, I've supported Hibs enough, a long enough time to know that uh, we can't ever be hopeful or confident in any game. But we're going into it with, on the back of uh, some good results and some all right performances uh, and Aberdeen don't particularly look to be doing too well in either of those departments. Mm-hmm. So 
I'm uh, re- relatively hopeful that we can at least not lose. And then if we don't lose, we can go for there. Uh, but it's another game and it's uh, Jack Ross's record in these type of games isn't the best. So mm-hmm. I will not be taking anything for granted. And Aberdeen, even though they're not playing that well in the last couple of games, still have a decent enough squad that can obviously beat us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose, Callum, you know, we joked in a previous episode how in a, a time of need, Celtic look forward to playing Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a case of in a time of need, we look forward to playing Hibs because Jack Ross always struggles to seem to get the better of Derek McInnes. It does seem to be the case. Um, and that is probably the only reason that I've got any sort of even smidgen of confidence going into uh, this game. In fact, we beat them twice already. Again, maybe not, probably not great performances, but we did enough. We got got the uh, result in those games. So I'm hoping maybe it'll be the same. That's, yeah, as you say, that's the only reason. It's just because of that. Other than that, mm-hmm. we've got no reason to be hopeful whatsoever. No, and, well, Adrian Martin Boyle maybe fancy mm. lending us a favour. I mean, no, penalty, aye. No, you'll not be doing that again, I don't think. Um... I was just about to say that the the first game there was absolutely nothing in it, mm-hmm. and then that moment of madness that was only that was the only thing that happened in the entire game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's got the penalty in squad, and then the second game at Petodre was when we got beat in uh, against Hearts, and I was on here hoping mm-hmm. for a reaction, and mm-hmm. it was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life. The game was Ryan over Portis after five minutes. Just to hand as a goalie took up over the mm-hmm. FA Ambrose mantle. Oh, but the the game was over after ten minutes, and then nothing happened for mm-hmm. the rest of it. Uh, so that those two games are not. I don't want to repeat them basically, <laughs> but we are after uh, getting beat from St Johnston, we couldn't have really done anything more in response. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rangers defeat aside, I suppose, but you. No, you the were... Rangers. Well, the Rangers game was the Rangers game. <clears throat> Morelos shouldn't have been on the park. Mm, yeah. True. And he scores a goal. Mm. Now, I'm not saying if Morelos was not on the park, we would have won or mm-hmm. not lost anyway, but he scores the only goal of the game and he shouldn't have been on the park. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's, a, it's a fair point. Um, and I think, you know, Callum, it's, it's kind of fair. Like, it seems to be that in these games against Hibs, once we get a goal, it's almost what other teams do to us. We get the goal sit in and Hibs never seem to break us down. True, and that is the only team we can really do that against, which is <laughs> another, yeah, maybe we can, if, I'd be very happy if that's the case again, but... Small sample sizes, yeah, boys, small sample very sizes. True. And that's also gambling on the fact that we don't gift them a goal to start off with as well, so... Yeah, Joe Lewis, we're looking at you Yeah, your goalie yeah. running into posts again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because Hibs fans hate playing us because they hate our style of play. And mm. I thought that was quite telling given that after the semi-final defeat, they were, you know, their fans were coming out and saying that Jack Ross is turning them into a council Aberdeen. We're not that bad, are we, Carl? We are pretty bad. We are pretty <laughs> bad. Um, Hibs fans hate how they how we play. We hate how we play. That's all there Michael, is. Michael, would it. you say that you're turning into a council Aberdeen just now? Well, the thing with Derek McInnes is with Aberdeen. I know you don't like him. I don't get it personally, but. The reason why you don't like him is because the um, football's not very good and mm. you seem to not be able to get past a semi-final or a mm-hmm. final, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you always finish third. So it's cons- you are consistently the best team outside of Celtic and Rangers over a season. Mm. Uh, now, that's what Jack, Jack Ross, under Hibs, he's kind of following that same model. Mm. Like the football was awful. Mm. It's like I actually don't even like watching Hibs anymore a lot of the time because it's that bad. You think it's worse now that you can't go to games as well? Well, that's well, that's another thing. Uh, that's why I think people are so angry on Twitter. Like people mm. were obviously like obviously angry before, but uh, when you're on when you're at the game, you've got a chance to sort of vent at the game, mm. and that's yeah, your totally. sort of release. Whereas when you're not when you're watching on the telly. You, wait, mm-hmm. you, unless you're just sitting shouting at the telly, then you're not really getting anything. <laughs> no, totally. And, and Callum, it's funny, like, what Michael says there, because I noticed Joe Sutherland saying that last night, you know, 
there are lots of comments about our football being eye bleeding, but we wouldn't be complaining if the results were actually going our mm-hmm. way. The complaints are because we're not we're not getting the results. And I suppose Hibs are actually not playing well, but scoring and getting results. We're just doing neither of those. Well, that's exactly what we said earlier in the season when we were it still wasn't maybe the best stuff after the COVID eight situation, but then we mm. sort of sort of grinding out results. So we <clears> sort of took comfort in that. But now it's just terrible football. We're not getting uh, the three points, and it's yeah, that's why it's so we're complaining so much. I mean, look at Newcastle. Oh, sorry, um, they were they've been playing horribly, not getting results, but now they're actually having a go a bit. And okay, they lost the other night. But it's so much better seeing team have a go, and then okay, if they don't have enough, then that's fine. If we could do the same, I'd be a bit happier with that than well, whatever they served up last night. But you know, Michael, looking ahead to the weekend, Martin Boyle, which we've touched on briefly there, in form. What have you made so far of your new signings in Chris Cadden and Jackson Irvin? What sort of impact have they brought to the Hib side? I like Cadden. I think he's brilliant. Mm. Uh, again, did you see us against Rangers? I didn't watch the game, no. no. Did you come? No, right. I didn't okay. see well, I can... Right, well, I'll exaggerate a wee bit here. He was, <laughs> he was one of the best players in the park. <laughs> well, uh, to be fair, I did listen... No, I... genu- no I, genuinely, he was... He had Bono Barisic. Like, mm-hmm. Bono Barisic never got the better of him once the entire of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say, I listened to the um, Long Bangers podcast um, and their review after the game, and they you know, they said the same, that they were very impressed with him. And I think, Callum, he was a player you were kind of disappointed to see us not, not go after. I mean, most people choose us over Hibs just now in the transfer yeah. market. Well, that's but, your, basically your transfer model, just <laughs> take whoever we want, like Callum yeah. Hendry, for instance. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll see if that one's been the right decision or not. <laughs> True. But yeah, I did look at that when they signed Karen. I thought that would probably suit our system, sort of the wing back role. And same with Irvin as well. I thought that was two signings I was That's envious not- while we watched us just be absolutely stagnant and do nothing until the, mm-hmm. obviously the last couple of days. Jackson Irvin's been really good. Uh, he's, he, like, when we bought him, he'd no played for like mm-hmm. 18 months or something. So he's, he's obviously he's just getting back to fitness with every game. But Last night and Saturday in particular, he was, he was brilliant. Well, it's funny, you know, Michael says that, you know, um, Jackson Irvin not played for a while and he's still finding his feet yet in his first, well, his game against Dungeon United, he, he grabs two assists. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Fraser Hornby and Calm Hendry for us last night, you can tell they've not played. Mm-hmm. More so Fraser, but I think I was a bit harsh on him given how isolated he was mm-hmm. um, during the game. But it's just different impacts for, for different players, I suppose. Um what did you make of the whole Kevin Nisbet, Kevin Nisbet and Ryan Porteous situation on deadline day, Michael? Glad, of, oh. I'm sure you're glad they both stayed. Well, yeah, because they're two of our best players, and you oh, need your best players. <laughs> Ryan Porteous, no, he's not. R- Ryan Porteous <laughs> is a, <laughs> a fantastic defender. But well, anyway, disagree. Well, but then we both be wrong. But. <laughs> um, I think with Nisbet, I think it was his agent turning his head. Mm-hmm. I blame his agent as much as anything else. I don't blame him for wanting to play like in a higher level. Like obviously, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. He, he's not he's not a Hibs fan to my knowledge, mm-hmm. so he's not got the same sort of. He doesn't care as much as me or as mm-hmm. what I would be in that situation. So <laughs> I don't blame him for that, and I just from last night from his performance last night it doesn't look like he's going to down tools or anything like that which a lot of players would do when mm-hmm. they don't get their own way so I don't um, obviously I don't want him to go but I don't I wouldn't blame him mm-hmm. and the same for Poachers Poachers came out last night and said that he's obviously wants to play at a higher level in his career mm-hmm. which is fair enough but whilst he's at Hibs he's got to be doing everything he can for Hibs and what else yeah. can you ask for? Was it he, was it, he scored last night for this? He did, I. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it's, it's just, you know, telling that both these players, despite having potentially their, their head turns, you know, that they still go on and make an impact. And do you think Kevin Nisbet will start at the weekend or do you think he'll continue as is up top? Well, we've had the same team that's won two games in a, two games in a row. Mm-hmm. So why, why, why would we be changing the team? Yeah, just interesting to see um, your thoughts on because obviously you know the speculation might turn this bit's head and that's why he's 
had his place on the bench. But one player that might be making their entrance into the Aberdeen team, Callum, Flo Camberry, do you think we might see him start? Uh, I don't know if he'll start because I, I think if saw him, he's played eight games or something for St. Gallen. I think they mm-hmm. were saying they need to get him into Scotland first, let alone anything else. So, yeah, well, unless um, he's trying to find a way of not coming after watching last night. <laughs> wouldn't blame him, wouldn't blame him. But I think we'll probably see him come off the bench at some <clears> stage. But it'll be interesting to see. And he's probably thankful that there's no Hibs fans uh, there, perhaps. I don't think he would get the warmest <laughs> of receptions. Yeah, I know. I did t- tell Michael he's not allowed to use certain swear words on this show to um, describe Camberry's return. So, but Michael, what sort of player are we going to be getting in Flo Camberry? Um, Twice words. Someone, someone that only cares about Flo Camberry. Only cares about Flo Camberry. Just remember that from the beginning. Um, a physical player. He's, he's he's physical. He's physical. He's he's he, he was a good player, and I mm-hmm. think that's why I don't like him so much because of what he did. Like I don't care if he was Average. like a journeyman. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? They'd be like, see you later, like Stevie mm-hmm. Mallet. See you later. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Signing <laughs> for some Turkish team that nobody's ever heard of, and that that's been his dream his whole life. Sure. No problem, Stevie. <laughs> but um, what do I say? All right, Flo Camberry. Well, when the cameras are there, when the Sky cameras are there, that's when you'll see the best of them. Yeah, well, we've seen that say, when his Rangers debut with his goal against, well, or his goal against St. Johnson anyway. But, you know, listening to um, the Totally Scottish Football show this morning, they said, you know, on his day, Camberry is a quality player, but mm-hmm. it's almost like he doesn't give it often enough. And there was almost a surprise from them that Rangers didn't go and sign him permanently in the summer. Was that something you were maybe surprised at? You're asking me? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, well, as he said when he signed for him, it was his dream to sign for Rangers. So I would have thought that he'd have been gutted to have <clears throat> left under such little uh, little negotiation. But mm. I don't think he would have got a game consistently at Rangers. Mm. No. No, it'll be interesting to see how he how he performs for us and if he, you know, does involve get involvement. But Callum, you know, my concern around that is he only joined St. Gallen in the summer, uh, only eight appearances, uh, and now he's getting shipped out on loan already. So zero goals as well. So it's it's not it's not like a good um to be fair, we we uh, the strike force we had in were doing nothing. So let's just ship in another three that aren't uh, firing all cylinders and see what happens, I suppose. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, Calm. Do you think you know? I remember when we first got Michael on the sh- on the show earlier in the season. Grant Campbell asked us a question um, about how important beating Hibs was in terms of the race for third. Mm-hmm. It was a bit early to kind of be speaking about that. We're now obviously into February. Um, mm-hmm. We're not in a great run of form. Uh, Hibs have managed, and uh, yeah, I say that. No, not even lightly. Um, Hibs obviously gained ground on, on us last night. Do you think now this game defines the race for third place? I think it's must win. Yeah. If for example, say we go and put in a terrible performance and Hibs win, not only is that bad for like the current standings, but going forward, how deflated will they be <clears> after picking up one point from the last three games, uh being again two against Livingston, one against Hibs. It's yeah. must win. They need to put in a performance, even if it's a great performance and they so must get score. out of a 1 0. Yeah, a goal would be nice in all honesty. But if they put in a gritty performance and come out, show some fight and just get a 1 0, then that would be huge going forward. But yeah, I think as well with like our game in hand also being against Celtic, we can't afford to let Hibs get any further away than they already are. Well, we might a... need you to do us a yeah. favor for saying. That's well, true. that's why I was, I was actually going to then put it on you, Michael, and say, do you feel if you win, do you think that further enhances your chances for a second? I mean, you obviously got a draw at Parkhead um, against a COVID-depleted Celtic, which we're maybe disappointed in. But do you still think Hibs have got hopes of finishing second or are you just dropping too many silly points? Good question. Thanks. I don't know. And COVID-depleted, really? I mean, I mean when you look at their team. team, when you look at their team, they had a good team. They're the mm. team that would that would be better than most other teams in the league, right? Mm. So, I mean, do you need to go one 0 down to have a go at them. 
I know that. But that's not that's not strictly true. We had five corners in the first twelve minutes. Yeah, Didn't on. do anything with them though. Well, it's, we probably won't have it. It's, you don't get five corners for not having a goal. We're not in the position to be saying no one's doing anything with corners, Glenn. <laughs> don't. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say, I, second, second's a bit of a pipe dream, isn't it? Mm, yeah. For both of us. Yeah. Uh, I so. I f- I, but, because Celtic won 4 0 last night, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, you, you look at them and you think, they, they've been really bad, but mm-hmm. they have to be. Unbelievable Between level of bad, season, even yeah. still, even yeah. still to, to yeah. and we would have to be. I mean, when you look at our fixtures from now till the split, like they're, they're, they're very achievable games. Mm-hmm. There's no. So then, based but, on so, if you think seconds, that, if you think seconds a pipe dream, then would you say a win on Saturday would pretty much secure Hibs's top four place? Top four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to think so. I'm a bit wary of Livingston, though. I'm probably mm. more worried about Livingston than Aberdeen. Well, Not yeah. I think if Livingston catch us, then we're not. Yeah, we, we're done for. I think basically. Yeah. Well, there's no I, you way. Know, we always said it like months ago. Like it was so fine having such a big gap to mm-hmm. the rest of the league. It was pretty much just a two horse race for third and maybe trying to catch Celtic in second but now we're definitely be looking over our shoulders at mm-hmm. Livingston um, yeah it's... I don't think I don't think there's any danger you have worried about Livingston but then if they catch up with you guys then we're going to be just yeah there's no chance mm-hmm. we're done for yeah and, and what about Jack Ross as a whole then Michael um you were certainly a vocal critic of his after the semi-final it's fair yeah, to say I... uh, as was a lot of Hibs fans um, overall feelings towards Jack Ross? I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And I will explain how I don't know. Uh, right. Ford in the league. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Football's terrible. <laughs> Negative. Uh, the, the record in the big games is, mm. one, is, is one of the worst in happy managers in my life mm-hmm. in big games so that's that's not good enough mm-hmm. now Saturday big 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 game mm-hmm. yeah for both of us right yeah. I will if he can get a result on Saturday we'll hear he from will, you on Saturday <laughs> he will he will have my mm. support okay. but if he don't right and what are you classing as a result on Saturday? Are you classing that as a win or win. just avoiding defeat? Well, I don't like to go into games to avoid defeat, especially at home and especially mm-hmm. against teams that are below you in the league, right? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Nice cheap shot there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think we've got to go with the intention of winning the game, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, so one. Okay, that's fair, fair, fair enough. enough, you know. And I suppose after another hand in horror show, you know, Hibs have shown some good bounce back. I suppose if you can throw in cheap jibes at us, we'll throw them back. Well, well, you need to be a hand in the first place, don't you? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> also, also, um, when you look at the games that followed that, Rangers, we spoke about, uh, some, Dundee United, Dundee United are absolutely horrendous. Mm-hmm. Like they're so bad, like they that we can't even score irre- against them. Yeah. Yeah. Irre- irre- irrespective, irrespective of whether we were looking f- to bounce back from a hand in defeat or not, we should be winning against Dundee United. End of story. Like just as an individual game, that should be winning. Mm-hmm. St. Mirren last night, their goalie got sent off after half an hour. Again, we should be looking to beat St. Mirren at every occasion. So, yeah. although I'm pleased that we've won both games I'm not mm-hmm. there's not enough to convince me that uh, we've bounced back or any of that yeah. nonsense that's fair enough and then Calum I suppose <clears throat> the question for you then is um, where where can we beat Hibs um, I don't know if Michael will agree with this but Hibs home form so far this season hasn't been great mm, so maybe no. that's something we can look to exploit Callum 
Well, if Aberdeen are ever going to get a result in any game, Ferguson, McCrory need to dominate the midfield. And we've said that time and time again, and it's not been happening lately. Okay, Ferguson Doesn't looks help better when last McCrory night. Can- Especially when McCrory has to keep dropping back into defence, yeah. it's really not helping. True, but also now they've brought in Jackson Irving. That is a lot tougher than the uh, sort of competition we'd had uh, previously. So mm-hmm. if we can get come out on top in, in there, then I think we've got a decent chance. But the, if we will come out on top there, I'm not so convinced. It would help if we could at least score a goal. I think that's our four games without a goal. Um, so you know you can't beat teams without scoring goals unless mm-hmm. Hibs want to do that for us you know maybe if off your Mar- Marciano wants to throw one into his net like Joe Lewis likes to do give us yeah. a helping hand that'd be nice um, but Calm do you think you know I was speaking to uh, Chris Robertson this morning who helps uh, help with a question for the Grimmer podcast that's coming out next week he said do you think we should maybe change formation to a flat back four and go maybe four four two for example, do you think, mm. especially on the back of last night, allow the likes of Kennedy, Hayes, Hedges, if fit, more room to actually be attacking players? Yes, definitely. Especially think if Ash Taylor isn't fit as well, then rather than dropping McCrory in there, I would much rather he stayed in the middle of the park and went flat four. Uh, but then who comes in at right back? Does Shiloh can come in? Who knows? Well, see, that was my thinking last night as well. As if, well, this morning, sorry, was if we go to a flat back four, who do we then play at left back? Because we already spoke about Greg Lee's performance. Do you stick Andy Constantine out wide at left back as he's been so used to previously? But if Taylor's out, who do you then play as your second centre back? Yep, very, very good point. Because it would be Hoban who'd probably slide across the right ha- right centre half, uh, right back, sorry, if if it wasn't Logan. Well, so I suppose the only other option would be you look at Kieran and Gwenya, like a young, that, yeah. youngster who's not yet to start for the club. So it's a bit of a dilemma in such an, mm. you know, and as Michael said, it's such an important game for, for both sides. We can't really afford to be, I don't know if you can really afford to tinker so much. Well, especially throwing in Nguenya when he's got, going to be up against Martin Boyle. That's probably one of the toughest yeah. tests you could put against Lee. But then at the same time, you've either got <clears> Considine <throat> going up against uh, his pace or Greg Lee, who's just, just so suspect it's unreal. So the only then mm-hmm. option really is Johnny Hayes, who could probably give him a run for his money. That's about it. Yeah, and I think, you know, we look at Hibbs' pace. We spoke about that last time, Boyle being the threat, but he ended up being an asset for us. Um, just, you know, Hibbs just seem to have pace throughout their team, now adding Cadden and, and Jackson Irvin. Is that something you think the Hibbs will be able to exploit against Aberdeen, with, certainly with the wing-backs in place, Michael? I just think that Aberdeen... Like the players, are like they're so tall, but they're, and they're so slow. Yeah, a really poor training circle. And like the 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 quick players seem really quick mm-hmm. because they're like with all these trees, basically. That's like what as I call them. Like <laughs> yeah, Johnny yeah. Hayes, Johnny Johnny Hayes. Like he would he, if I was if I was picking the team, I would have Johnny Hayes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he's he's like. But would you be no, more worried as a, uh, sorry to interrupt you there? But would you be more worried as a Hibs fan seeing Hayes in a midfield like attacking role rather than a like left wing back? I play him at left back. Okay, that's interesting. I suppose he can bomb forward from there as well. Yeah. Because <clears throat> um, the damage of him not being at left back would be greater than mm. having him at, in an attacking role. Well, I suppose, you know, kind of what Michael says, is it's an interesting suggestion if you then put Hayes at left back, Constantine Hoban in the centre, and you could use the experience of Logan in at right back, and you've got he- uh, Kennedy and McLennan. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it's unsure if Hedges will be fit. Um, you could use them ah, as your wingers. Um, well, as some of our fans like to see say that he got WWE tackled to the ground last yeah. night. Yeah, basically his arm was wrapped up in Jackson Longridge and went down and just like popped it, I think, or something like Listen, that. Listen, there was only one WWE tackle that took place last night, and that was by Lewis Ferguson. A forearm smash. Yeah, he loves a bit. How of that. he never got sent off for that is unbelievable. Well, to be fair, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting point though because Callum, I actually thought the same when I saw the incident. Mm. Um, and you know he liked to walk a tightrope, and he had a similar incident against Motherwell mm-hmm. as well with a flailing forearm. It's, it could be something that catches up to him at some point. He's very much a Ferguson, but also if he comes up against anyone who knows how to play him, 
as well, then easy to get him in, tr- in trouble, get him riled up, and he'll do something like that. Yeah, well, you you think of the likes of Gogic um, for Hibs, he, I'm sure, might want to leave one or two challenges on him and try to wind him up. Would be, would be clever play by them, and honestly, can't really complain because Ferguson does it to himself, really. Mm-hmm. And Michael, though, just a final word looking ahead to the, the weekend. Given the, the run Hibs are currently on, um, would you say there's there's no reason to not be confident from a Hibs point of view? Um, Hibs and confidence are not... <laughs> Two words that not interchangeable, I'm afraid. Fair enough. I'm afraid, like, every... No, I've learned the hard way on multiple occasions to never expect anything from Hibs in a positive sense. Fair enough. And, and you can't get locked down. Yeah. No, you can. But it's not as bad. <laughs> <laughs> just mentally prepared. <laughs> just uh, just program yourself for the worst to happen. Mm-hmm. And then when it happens, you're sort of already prepared for it. That's a good life That's lesson, awesome. if anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like we said, the show's often educational. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so, I'm so I think we could learn from that. Sorry. Calm, what about yourself, though? Obviously, we're on a terrible run of form and Easter Road's normally a, a tough place to go um, with fans. I think maybe different now that there's no fans still. Um, do you think we can take anything from this game? Both of us, the size there, like clutching desperately as straws here. Um, looking at the squad, look at everything on paper, then, yeah, no reason not to beat them twice this season. We've got a decent enough squad. There's players in there who can do it. But when then you and apply logic and given the recent form, the recent tactics, just the recent desire in general, no, mm. <laughs> no, in short, no. Would you take a draw? Right now, absolutely bite your hand off at a draw. Um, it wouldn't do much for us in the league, but... Uh, Stems the bleeding a wee bit. Yeah, a little bit, I suppose. I think the fact that it would keep you still in touching distance for a third, um, and I just... My, my biggest concern is obviously if the likes of Taylor and Hedges are out, it stifles an attacking presence and someone that's been key to our defence so far this season. And just, yeah, him just seem to be flying with confidence and pace. And yeah, it's, it's a big worry for me. Mm. We just don't look capable so far. Yeah, that's what I want to say. That's all it is. We just don't... I'd, that's what I'm saying. Logic dictates it's just not going to happen. But mm-hmm. Oh, well. Never know. You never know. And then, um, Michael, if if all goes well for an Aberdeen point of view, then we might not see you back for our initial reaction episode. No, you won't. <laughs> but if... Um, That's all, only guarantee. <laughs> if all goes terribly from an Aberdeen point of view, then um, I'll be, we'll be interested here. to hear your, yeah. your points and we'll, we'll see you again on Saturday. But Cool. I'd say all the best, but... Um, How yeah, much we... are we charging for the game? I actually Ooh, haven't I've not looked. looked. I've not looked, but it'll probably be. I'm gonna. It can't know. be worse think... than Livingston charging twenty quid no. for a game that was even on. <laughs> <laughs> true. Twice. Very very true. <laughs> very, twenty very pounds true. to watch a pitch inspection, but if yeah, I'm have... sure that people will find a will and a way to watch the game. That's mm-hmm. what we'll see. Well, no yeah. problem. Right, mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thank you Later very much, Michael. Thanks, guys, see you later. That was the thoughts of Michael Morning there. Thank you very much to Michael for joining us once again. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of Herb's insight, not just us wittering on the whole time. And moaning. Exactly. <laughs> Michael moaning. More like, <laughs> funny. Uh, thank you very, very much for tuning in uh, on whatever platform you tuned in. If it's on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe, like the video, comment down below with your thoughts. I'm sure you've got plenty. And then follow us on any other platform that you're listening into. And follow us on Twitter at RTG underscore podcast. <laughs>